you. Amen. Amen. So we have to come out of agreement with the lies. We have to come out of agreement with where the enemy has tried to tell you you're, you're never going to change. You're never going to mount anything. You'll never get healed. You'll never have deliverance. You have to come out of agreement with that. All right? So, Lord, we just thank you that you are the way maker. And because of the power of the blood of Jesus, because of the cross, because of how brutally beaten you were, that you died on the cross for our freedom. And so, Lord, we decree we are the healed of the Lord and we are free in Jesus, in Jesus' name. So, um, when I was praying about today, the Lord said to me that, he said, listen, I want to activate my healing power in everyone. Do you know we're all healers? Oh, <laughs> my husband has, I'm thinking he's waving to me too. Um, and so we're all healers. We all have healing power. And so, and I want to go through, there's certain scriptures here that I just absolutely love studying. And I just want to encourage you in that because, you know, we, we still aren't out of this virus thing. And, um, you know, and, and the Lord needs us. He needs us to stand and decree the word of the Lord, but also be a believer and pray for people. And, um, and, and, you know, we've seen many people healed. And so I just want to encourage you today, okay? So we want to break down the barriers for healing, all right? So obviously we don't have any powers in, our, in ourselves, but it's because of our alignment with Jesus, right? We're all called to lay hands on the sick, and you'll see in the scriptures. So you may not feel qualified, but thank God we have Holy Spirit within us that will guide and lead us, amen? So in Psalm 103, 2 through 3, it says, Bless affectionately and gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one forget not one of all his benefits, who forgives every one of our iniquities and who heals each one of our diseases, okay? So he, when you look up that word forget, it means don't ignore it. It means don't be oblivious to what the promises of God are. That's our responsibility, right, to know what the word of the Lord says. And, uh, and again, it's good to rehearse all this. I know a lot of us are saved a long time, but we need to rehearse the word of God and get a fresh revelation because every time you meditate on it, Holy Spirit shows you something new, right? And so to, to his benefits, how many of you have a benefit package in your company that you work for? And Lord knows you want to read to know when you get your vacation days. You want to know, you know, your sick days. You want to know what's due to you. Well, the Bible's saying here we have benefits in here because of the covenant of God that we are called to, you know, the Lord says there's a covenant for us for healing and for deliverance and for prosperity and for safety. That's our covenant. And to stand upon the word. And so when we are going through these things, it seems difficult because when you're worrying about something, when you're in the midst of a problem, it, it can be challenging, right? And so no one's saying you don't have emotions and you don't get concerned about what's going on or you don't even feel fear, even though the Bible says fear not, right? But how many times Sometimes even as we're standing upon the word, we feel that emotion of fear, right? That doesn't mean you're not in faith. That means you're just standing there in faith, even though they, there's a war with your flesh and your spirit, but you're standing there trusting God. Amen? Because the Bible says that he has not given us in 1 Timothy a spirit of fear, right, but of power, love, and of sound mind. There's over 365 scriptures on fear. And how many of us know that what, what happens to all of us? We get afraid. Things happen. But that doesn't mean that you're not in faith. Let me just uh, make sure you understand that it means that you're not backing down. It means that no matter what, even though I may feel this way, I am standing on the word. Because the Bible says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. The Bible says that he will never leave me nor forsake me, right? So we know we war with the word. So um, he heals us, and that word heal there is rafa, and it means to make healthful, to heal, to mend, to cure, to thoroughly make whole. That's his goal for us. You may say, well, I have prayed, and I didn't get healed. But, you know, how many of you were here when Delia Knox uh, spoke here? All right. So she was in a, we, we used to co-host for TBN, and she was in a car accident, and her pelvic was crushed. She was in a wheelchair, and when we interviewed her, she was nine years in her wheelchair. And so I thought, Lord Jesus, and she had so much joy on her face. She really did. And she said, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be healed. And I thought, well, praise God. Amen. But, you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, maybe she's just being a little, 
you know, out there with her faith, right? How many times do we think they're, they're too extreme, right? Well, I'm just telling you, I'm extreme. But, but I was wondering with her, and I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, would I have that much faith? Well, I'm going to tell you something. We were in Alabama, and she had been praying and declaring every single day, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to drive a Lexus. I'm going to wear, you know that designer with the red soles? I can never say his name. Who? Him. And so, <laughs> I don't know what his name is. Anyway, she said, I'm going to wear those kind of shoes, and I'm going to do this. And she kept prophesying over herself, even though she wasn't experiencing any kind of healing. 22 and a half years later, she's in a service with John Kilpatrick and some other young uh, minister, and, and who? Nathan... Morris. And so what happened was she decided the moment they started to pray, I'm not staying, I'm leaving. She said, I have been flipped. I have been flopped. People have prayed over me. And she goes, I actually felt bad for them because I wasn't getting healed. So she said, but what happened was all of a sudden some lady came up and brought a, a, an infant that had kidney issues. And she said, I felt such compassion for this baby. She said, and as I'm looking at it, and she said to my husband, get me out of here. I don't want these people praying for me. It's a healing service. I don't want them praying for me. She said she started to feel tingling in her legs. Now, if you're paralyzed, you know you don't feel tingling in your legs, right? And she said to her husband, oh, my God. She says, I'm starting to feel something in my legs. So they, they got her, and they started praying. And this is all. You can, you can go on YouTube and see all this. And, and so they're helping her walk. Now, there's atrophy. She's in the wheelchair for 22 and a half years, right? And so she gets healed. And so then after that, she's totally flipped out and thinking, oh, my God, is this for real? And basically went home because she was afraid. You know, we have crazy emotions, don't we? And she went home and stayed in bed for a month. And so John Kilpatrick and, and Nathan, they had to go and say to her, you are healed, you know? And so then we were in Alabama, and she has a twin sister. And I'm standing there, and I said to Peter, is that Delia Knox? At the time, it was, she was Delia Roman. And she came out wearing her shoes with the red souls and in her high and came out because she's a singer she used to travel with Shirley Caesar and I mean God performed a miracle I'm telling you we don't have to wait 22 and a half years the suddenlies of the Lord are here amen but she decreed she prayed she said I'm not backing down her sister said to us that when she would drive her car she had all the the remote and everything was up on the dashboard she wouldn't let anybody help her and she said, I'm doing it myself. And she would get in. And she said, her sister said, it would take like 30 minutes before we got somewhere. We're like, please let us do this so that we don't have to wait for you. But she was insistent. And she said, no, I am telling you, this is how I'm getting my healing. The Lord told me, and I'm praying, and I'm believing, and I'm trusting God. See, we can't give up. We cannot give up. Because what does the enemy do? He wants us to focus on what's not happening but you know the scripture in Romans, we call those things which be not as though they are, right? You call it into the now. You say, oh, well, that's crazy. No, was it crazy for her? Listen, most of us would have told her, honey, just sit down and be quiet. You know, come on, you're, you're, you're in a wheelchair this long? Yes, that's the God of the supernatural that we serve. So I want to really build your faith up, and I want to encourage you with the great I am and what he wants to do for us. Because I believe I, with all my heart, that we are going to see the supernatural healing power of God like what we, we would see in the past like this. And so it's like now, and I know people are getting healed. I know you are. But I mean, I'm just saying the suddenly, the, the supernatural. You talk about evangelism. You want to evangelize? Well, that's a way. But we can't just go by what we're feeling. We can't just go by what, like, oh, my God, it doesn't look like they're healed. Sometimes when you're preaching, if you see some of your faces, you think, Lord Jesus, oh my God, it was the worst message ever. And then some people will come up, that was such a word. I'm like, it was? You should have notified your face. But you see, that's what happens. We can't just look, go by what we see, even though we're natural beings, right? But the supernatural, our supernatural seeing sense needs to be developed. And it really does come to your presence, you know, being in the Lord's presence. But the word, you have to know what the word says, because then, then you get to see. 